everyone, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm really excited to share this technique with you. We are going to be ink blending and adding color to the deboss side of an embossing folder. I've never shared this technique in a video before, and in fact, I saw someone else do it in a reel and decided I wanna share this technique with you. I had so much fun using embossing folders from the latest release, and so I decided to pull out this hibiscus cluster embossing folder from an older release to make it new again. So we have some white cardstock here. I'm using hammer mill, and I'll use it to run it through my die cutting machine to get an embossed image. Now I'm gonna flip this over and use the back side. The embossed or top side is really pretty, but for this technique, we're gonna be using the back side, and you'll see why a little bit later on. So right away, we get to add color, and I'm gonna start ink blending all of those hibiscus flowers in different colors. First, I'm gonna use amethyst for a purple flower, and since this is the only cool tone on my card, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the center. So I've picked this hibiscus flower, and I'm gonna ink blend a light wash of purple over those areas. And if you can see closely, I'm using the very tip of my blending brush there so that I can get into the nooks and crannies a little bit closer, but not go over too much. I don't want this color to bleed onto any foliage or leaves that are in the background. And I know it's a little bit difficult to see because the cardstock is white right now, but you'll see it fully transform here and be fully saturated with color as we continue to add color to each of the elements on this panel. I added a taffy color to the center of this purple orchid and now I'm just going back in with that purple again to bring back some of the purple from that because the pink overtook a little bit. Then I'll work on the second flower here with a more coral color. This hibiscus and the next one is going to be one color but I'm going to saturate the ink more towards the center of the flower and fanning it out towards the outer edges. And it's okay if you don't get any color into those nooks and crannies because it kind of acts like a highlight on the petals once you're done adding the color all around the borders of this embossed image. And if you're wondering, I'm using Positively Saturated Inks today by Simon Says Stamp. The second and third colors that I use were Watermelon and Blush. Now I'm gonna use some rose and blend it with lemonade for another two-toned flower. So I'm starting the color at the center of the hibiscus flowers or at the bottom of this one here in the top corner. And then I'll just blend it out a little bit less than what I did on the other solid flowers. And then I'll go in with the yellow and just work around the top edges. Again, I'm just using the very tip top of my small blending brush here. There are detailed blending brushes that you can use. I'm just making use of what I have out and this works out just fine. So I'll blend that yellow into the pink and then you get this peach color that's really, really pretty as a blend from the two colors. Okay, so the flowers are done and now we're gonna work on the leaves. The leaves are very close to the flowers. Before we start, I wanna prevent the green from bleeding onto the flowers as I ink blend. So to do that, I'm gonna create some masks. What I did was I embossed another panel using hammer mill cardstock, and then I'm gonna use a pair of scissors to fussy cut around the flowers. And then I'll inlay those embossed flowers over the debossed areas to mask off the flowers so that I can ink blend the leaves without the green bleeding onto the flowers. I hope that makes sense. If you're a careful ink blender, you can skip this part. I actually created another panel, which I'll show you later, where I did no masking and it ended up being just fine. So if you're worried about it, feel free to take this extra initiative to emboss a second panel and fussy cut for some masking. I'm using two shades of green here, Sprout and Field. I wanna add a light blend of the lightest color all over all of the areas where the foliage is, and then go back in with a darker shade to add some shading. So as you can see here, I'm holding down three masks with my left hand, trying to ink blend the leaves between the three different flowers. And I'll work my way all around the panel until I have all the leaves covered with this lighter green. Then using the darker green, which is field, I'm going to go in and ink blend the bases of each of the leaves to make sure that there is a darker concentration of color at the base so that it looks like there's shading and shadow to each of the leaves. So quickly I realized here that I don't need the masks very much because I'm only ink blending a smaller area of each of those leaves, but it's really nice to have those masks when those leaves butt up to a flower. So here we have the ink blended panel and I really wanna draw attention to the center of those flowers. 
I'm using a Sakura Jelly Roll pen in Stardust Galaxy, and this color is yellow. It's got some shimmer to it. You can also use a gold metallic pen if you have one. And I'm just flooding that area and all the little hibiscus centered dots with this pen. And it really does a nice job of adding color, shimmer, and shine to the flower centers. Okay, so now that our flowers and foliage are taken care of, this is where I think the magic begins. I'm using a black ink here. This is just a regular black ink and I'm using one from the Rainbow Splash Collection from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm just using a corner of this ink pad to kind of swipe color over it. And as I start out here, I'm being super hesitant, going very slow and just using a very small amount of the corner of this ink pad. If you're brave, you can swipe the whole thing on it. This is a felt pad, so it is a little bit firmer. It's only gonna catch the areas that are raised on this debossed panel, which would be all the negative space and all of the negative space between the flowers and foliage. So as I work my way around the panel, you'll see the veins of the leaves are catching that dark ink, and it's really drawing interest and dimension and depth to all of the flowers as well because that ink does capture the raised spaces between each of the petals. As I finish up here, I really just want to concentrate more black color in areas where it might be a little lighter or is needing more concentration of that ink. And you'll see here towards the end, I do get a little bit braver and I'm using the entirety of the ink pad to swipe across the entire panel here. So we are done with this black color, and as I mentioned earlier, I ink blended a second panel where I did no masking, and I really wanted to show you that you can do this with a felt pad as well. One thing I want to mention here is that you want to use a darker color than any other color that's on your cart because you wanna make sure that it fully covers all of the areas without any of the other colors showing through. So this color here is kale and it's a very dark green. And again, it is a positively saturated ink pad, so it is foam. And as you can see, I do struggle a little bit more with not allowing extra ink to flow into the flower petals or leaves in negative areas or in debossed areas. With foam ink pads, it has more of the ability to grab on to other places because of the sponginess of the foam pad. So you just gotta be really light-handed and just go a little bit slower, but it's totally doable. Now this step is completely optional, but I wanted some gold splatter, so I'm using a Brutus Monroe Shimmer Splash in Gilded, which is a gold color, and it's like a little tiny nail polish bottle, and it's very handy to use. I'm just using my finger like I would with a regular splatter paintbrush and flicking that gold metallic ink all over the card panel. Now to adhere it to a card base, I use some 3D foam squares because we have the embossed side on the other side, so we have a lot of raised areas. So I'm placing the 3D foam squares in negative areas on the back side and using that to adhere it to a card base. That ensures that everything catches the card base and is secure on the card base. For the sentiment on both these cards, I'm using the Kathy Zilski Happy Combo Set. That's the stamp and die set that you see in the right hand corner there. There is also a Kathy Zilski Happy Die, which is what I am die cutting in matte gold cardstock and stacking with two layers of white cardstock and then layering over a vellum shadow. This Happy Die coordinates perfectly with the Happy Combo Stamp Set and that's why I like to use them together. I stamped two sub sentiments from the Happy Combo set. I'm gonna emboss that over black cardstock with white embossing powder. And once that's heat set, I'm gonna use the coordinating dies to die cut those sub sentiments. Now I'm gonna roughly lay out where I want these sentiments and the sub sentiment, and then I'll work on gluing everything down. Since there's already a lot of dimension from the embossing folder, as well as the 3D foam squares that were used to attach it to the card base, I'm going to attach these sentiments directly onto those card panels. And I'm using my trusty T ruler here to make sure everything is lined up straight and nice before I complete my cards. And there you have it two cards using a debossed ink blending technique. I hope you enjoyed this process and seeing these cards come together, and I hope you'll give this technique a try. If you're interested in any of the products that I use, be sure to check out the links below as well as on the coordinating blog post where everything will be linked for your convenience. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Hi there, I'm 
Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.